Okay, so now that we've looked at evaluating radicals, we're going to look at some radicals that can't directly be evaluated uh, because the radicand will not be a perfect square. But instead, we're going to be able to simplify them down to something that looks a little nicer. Okay, so we're going to start out uh, just by reviewing the idea that radicals and exponents basically undo each other, right? So a square and a square root, um, one, you know, a square does something, a square root undoes that, okay? It's the reverse. And because they're related in this way, they follow all of the same properties. So all of the exponent rules apply to roots. One very important exponent rule uh, that's going to apply to roots is the power to a power, I'm sorry, product to a power rule. We saw this when we did exponent rules. If you had x times y to the nth power, that n applies to both factors inside of the parentheses. Well, in a similar way, a root will do the same thing. A square root of xy is the same thing as the square root of x times the square root of y. Roots and powers follow the same rules or the same properties. Okay, So you can split a root up. You can also split a root up when you have a fraction. Okay, Now this becomes very handy when you have things like the square root of 100x. All right, square root of 100x can be simplified by separating this off with the square root of 100 times the square root of x. Well, the square root of 100 is 10. The square root of x doesn't really simplify because we don't know what x is. So what we've done is we've taken this complicated radicand and turned it into something simpler with the 10 on the outside, which is a smaller number anyway. Right, So it looks nicer. It's what we call simplified form. Alright, so the main idea here is you can, you can uh, simplify a root as long as there is a perfect square factor. But what happens then, if I don't have a variable, if this was something like the square root of 200? Okay. Well, 200 has a perfect square factor, it's 100. Uh, I'm going to start working these vertically here. Uh, 200 can be written as 100 times 2. Okay, 200 is 100 times 2, then you can split that root between the 100 and the 2. The 100 simplifies to a 10, and the root 2 doesn't simplify. So 10 root 2 is the simplified form of the square root of, 100, of 200. Okay. Uh, we can do this with just about any number, for instance the square root of 50. Well 50 is the same as, it has a perfect square factor of 25, so it's the same as 25 times 2. It's also the same as 5 times 10, um, but some of those other combinations are not going to work because you have to have a perfect square, you know, something from the list we looked at in the last section, a perfect square factor in order to work uh, for this to work out. So we do the square root of 25, square root of 2, this becomes 5 times the square root of 2 because the square root of 25 is 5. Okay. Uh, let's look at one more uh, like this, and then we'll make it more complicated. How about the square root of 24? Well, 24 has a lot of factors, right? It has um, 24 has 2 times 12, it has 3 times 8, it has 4 times 6. Now, out of all the numbers in this list, which one's a perfect square? The answer is 4. So that's the combination I want to use. I don't care about these other ones because they don't give me a perfect square. So I look at the square root of 24 becomes the square root of 4 times 6. When I separate off the two 
factors, root 4 becomes 2, and root 6 doesn't simplify. Okay. Okay, so now the next idea is to incorporate variables back in. We're going to use uh, um, some uh, bigger variables or bigger powers on the variables than what we saw before. So something like the square root of x squared. Well, what ends up happening is because the square root and the square undo each other, you end up simply with an x here. Um, you know, the square root of 4 squared, well 4 squared would be 16 and the square root of that would be 4 again. So if you try to 5 here, 5 squared is 25, square root of that is 5. So you're undoing what was done in the first step. Now this is true only um, when the x value there is greater than or equal to 0. There are some situations where if we were plugging in negative numbers, this wouldn't work out. Um, from here on out, I'm going to assume that we're only working with positive or zero. Okay, we're not dealing with any negative numbers. Um, it's just going to help things to work out nicer now. Um, what's interesting is that the relationship between the square root and the square is that when you combine them, you get a power of one. A power of 1 is half of 2, so what you've done is you've divided the 2 in half. And this property works uh, consistently. If you were to take the square root of a to the 6th power, you would divide that 6th power in half because you're looking for what squared equals a to the 6th. Well, it would be a to the 3rd times a to the 3rd, right? a to the 3rd squared. So you cut the 6 in half to get the 3. Uh, I could do the square root of y to the tenth, and of course that would simply be y to the fifth. If you had an odd power, odd powers are a little bit more difficult. If you had an odd power, something like the square root of x to the uh, ninth, well, you would again need to find a perfect square factor. And with powers, perfect squares are always even, just like we saw with the 2, the 6, and the 10. So how do I make this a, an even power? Well, I just peel one of the powers off, so you get x to the 8th times x. Right? x to the 8th times x is the same as x to the 9th. But x to the 8th is a perfect square because it's got an even power, so this would be... Uh, the square root of x to the 8th and the square root of x. The square root of x to the 8th can be simplified as just x to the 4th. You cut that power in half and then you keep the x, I'm sorry, the square root of x on at the end. Okay. Um, let me try maybe one more example with an odd power and then we'll kind of combine some of these things together.